yo yo what is good guys it is your boy optics Scumpy, bringing you another modern warfare 3 competitive gameplay on the map arcaden playing snd and this actually this commentary uh, idea came from stefano6 the other day in the comments section it got 46 likes uh, as of right now and it's 10 17 on the same night that the commentary was posted and he asked can you do a commentary on competitive gaming talking about the different perks allowed slash disallowed Guns typically used, typical tap, typical tactics deployed, or anything informative for people like me who aren't that aware about competitive. And I would love—I said I would love to do this commentary. So here I go. I'm gonna do it for you guys right here. So let's start off with the perks that are usually used in competitive. You're usually seeing extreme conditioning in the first slot, then quick draw pro in the second slot with dead silence pro in the third slot. And sometimes an SND scavenger will get flip flopped out for uh, extreme conditioning because people people like to spray through the walls with impact sometimes when they have an ACR. So that's also something that people will use. They'll they'll get 180 bullets so they can just keep shooting. And um, those are usually the perks that you're gonna see used. That's pretty much what everyone uses occasionally. And you'll also see a sleight of hand, uh, sleight of hand pro in a CTF match or maybe even in a search. They're both, I mean, it's pretty irrelevant to use them. It's really not that great to use because uh, you can't really help your team out as much with the running flags and things uh, like that. So that's not used as much. But, yeah, your core three perks are going to be extreme conditioning, quick draw, and dead silence. And that's, like, the basic setup. That's what people expect to see whenever they're playing against you. And then... Next, let's go over the guns that are typically used. So as you can see, last round I was using an ACR, and this round I'm using a PP90. Those are two of the most uh, most used guns in the game, I would say, for competitive players. The ACR is the most well-rounded assault rifle. Uh, obviously, it's been proven so many times. The ACR is just a boss. It has little to no recoil, and it's pretty much three to four shots everybody consistently. And then you're gonna. Most people are gonna have focus on it because whenever you're playing against another professional player, their shot's gonna be, you know, really close, or on the exact same level as you. So having focus and not having as much flinch whenever you're getting shot at uh, is definitely something that people use. I've seen kick used a few times on the ACR, but it's not not used too much. Like I've probably maybe seen it once or twice, and uh, that's that's about it. But then you also see me using the P90 here, the PP90, not P90, but. What people use on this is ranged and focus, or range and focus. Those are usually the two that are used the most range because this gun's pretty inconsistent uh, from a far, a far way away, and uh, having range on it makes it a little bit more consistent. It kills a little bit quicker whenever you're in a, a longer gunfight because whenever people are L triggering with their ACR or you know just aiming down the sight the whole time, you need to have that range advantage so that you can actually take them out with the PP90 because you got to be right up on their face if you want to kill them with focus and that's the next point that I was going to make um, focus is used mainly by OBJ players or objective players people who you know go for the flags go for the bomb plants um, for more close range fast paced players that's what uh, I would say about 75% use focus and 25% use range somewhere within that I use range uh, I just like it better on LAN and online. It's just a better fit for me and my play style. And so yeah, the PP90, and then the last gun that you're gonna be see uh, gonna see being used is the MP7. Of course, uh, it's such a good gun. Pe people pretty much only use focus on that gun. Range is not used at pretty much all. It's really pointless because that gun is like a a pea shooter. It just shoots so accurately and so quickly that uh, you don't really need anything uh, on it other than focus. And I snake the hell out of this guy right here. But you don't really need anything on it other than focus because of how accurate and how fastly it shoots or how fast it shoots. So, yeah, most mostly people are going to be using focus. And if you're wondering why I don't have, you know, extended mags on or anything, that is because we are practicing for EGL-8. And the EGL rule set is that you cannot use extended mags on any of your guns. So we just don't use anything at all. We just prefer to just use the iron sight with nothing on it. Because it really is just better. It's just a comfor comfortability thing and uh, makes you more comfortable while you're playing if you're using the gun that you're, you know, you like to use. But now let's go into the next one. Typical tactics deployed. Um, in SND, it's usually two people on the main bomb site, one person in the middle of the map, and then one person watching the flank. That's, that's usually, I would say, 
the, you know, that's the setup that teams are going to be using most of the time unless they're trying something really risky and new. But if you're just playing a standard game, that's basically what you're going to be seeing. For, so for example, on this map, you're going to be seeing two go top B, P bomb, then one go bottom escalators uh, off the start. Bottom escalators to bottom mini, like that guy. He just went down low and then ran right through, which wasn't very smart of him. But And then you're going to see one more person go to the A bomb site, usually near bar side. And that's like the typical setup for this map. That's what teams are going to be using a lot of the time because it's safe. It's really safe and it's consistent if you play it well and you don't challenge the other team. It's really hard to break through unless, you know, somebody messes up on your team. And then for offense, I would say our, our strategy is pretty, you know, standard. I go bottom mini. Joey goes top uh, diamond, which is where the, you know, the escalator's up top. And I don't know how that guy didn't die. But... Rambo goes top paint or montage room, as you can see right here, and then uh, Will goes to the soda machines over there. So that's our strategy for SND on this map. We switch it up sometimes, obviously, because if you do the same thing, the team will just read you like a book, and you can't really do much whenever they know like exactly where you're going to be. They just they set up accordingly, and then they go to work on you. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much the SND setup you're going to be seeing. And then in CTF... I mean, there really is no strategy in CTF. It's really spontaneous, and it's whoever can get the kills at the right times, uh, block spawns at the right times, things like that. But for guns in CTF, you're usually going to be seeing two ACRs and two SMGs, so two people can hold down uh, like spawn traps and long-range fights, and then two people can be up in their face trying to pull the flags. And uh, don't take that in the wrong way. The ACR players can still pull the flag. That's why they're using extreme conditioning. Like I said, for the perks earlier, they're going to be pulling the flag to make sure that you know you're going to be winning uh, and getting as many flag pulls out as possible and being efficient as possible while slaying and pulling the flags. That's that's the sign of a really good slayer, somebody that can kill, but then at the same time can pull back and pull a flag every now and then whenever you need to get one out and you need to get that win. That's that's one of the signs of a very good slayer and a consistent slayer at that and not a kill whore because kill whores will just straight go for kills and they'll disregard the flag and sometimes it can really hurt your team but sometimes it's helpful but I would say it hurts your team more than it is helpful. And that's that's just about it for tactics. Um, there's nothing really else to, you know, crazy except for call outs. That's another thing that professional players do exceptionally well is we have call outs for pretty much everything. Like what I'm on right now is the escalators and then the other set of escalators um, over there where Rambo is right now is called uh, Diamond. We call that Bottom Diamond, Top Diamond. So our callouts are just so on point. We can we can find that last guy. We can see him. And someone can make a call out, and then we'll you know position ourselves in a way that he can't really do anything to stay alive or stop us. And that is really everything that I have to talk about with you today, guys. I ended up going 12 and 3. The scoreboard will show quickly right there. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a comment, favorite, subscribe it, and yeah, baby. Peace.